Welcome to the premiere episode of Bent Vent, a talk show by and for the gay and lesbian community, coming to you from Three Faces and Commercial Road. I'm Chris White. And I'm Vivian Ward. Each week, Bent Vent will be bringing you the current issues relating to the gay community. It's a show for you, so it'll be you who will be doing most of the talking. We'll be seeing some familiar faces from within our community, as well as some unknowns from our audience. Tonight, same-sex relationships and the law. This is the hottest topic to touch Ooh. our community since the Equal Opportunity Act of 95 and the subsequent Lawful Sexual Activity Amendment in 1996. Tonight we'll be looking at the comparisons between our model and the overseas models. What the preferred model for change is and how it will impact us. How the straight media has handed the suggested proposal. And how overdue is this change. Joining us this evening we have Debbie Kipper from the Equal Opportunities Commission. She was a principal writer and researcher for the paper that we'll be discussing this evening. We also have Greg Brown from the Homo De Factos, Michael Gordon, who is the Commissioner of the Equal Opportunities Commission, and Janet Jukes from the Gay and Lesbian Rights Lobby Group. A number of countries currently have uh, legislation in place to allow same-sex relationships, uh, some of the rights of heterosexual relationships. Um, what we learn from these models will impact on our system when it comes into place. Um, Debbie Kipper, uh, Denmark has uh, had a same-sex register and various legislations in place since 1989. Um, how do you think that model would apply in Victoria? Could we use any? Uh, I think when the government will look at some of the proposals or the options for reform in the paper, it will be useful for policy makers to have a look at some of the models which have been used overseas. Um, some of the examples are relationship registers or recognition of same-sex relationships as de facto relationships, and I'm sure they're models which will be useful. Uh, the USA and Belgium have um, uh, muni municipality uh, laws. Could that be done in Victoria, do you think? Uh, no, the municipalities in Victoria don't have the same power to enact laws that they do in the States or in Belgium, for that matter. Mm. Um, in Sweden in 1987, they actually administered equality for same-sex de factos, but it wasn't until seven years later that a more formal recognition was granted. What's the chances that something like that are likely to happen here? Um, it's quite hard to predict that at the moment. It, we are awaiting government's response on some of the options for reform and as to whether the government would be more inclined to move towards a relationship register or de facto recognition that is something that I'm not really sure of at the moment. Um, how much do you think the um, impact of other states and the uh, federal situation would impact on Victoria? I think the major impact is a very clear indication that this is not new. We aren't going to be the first state or the first country to eliminate discrimination against people in same-sex relationships. Other countries have done it, other states are looking at it. There has been movement in this area, so I think to that degree it will be very useful. Um, Jenna, perhaps you'd like to answer, how much do you think that world and interstate variances and opinions will affect our, our actual change or amendment to the Act that's proposed? Um, I think that I think that we can certainly learn a lot from what's happened in other countries. And for example, the Relationships Register has been successful in um, Europe in different countries, depending on whether gay men and lesbians take up that option. Um, so that's I mean, we can certainly learn from other sta other countries. Um, as far as the political scene in Australia is concerned, um, I think that Debbie's comments are really valid. Um, it really depends on. Um, what's happening elsewhere and um, what the political frame is. We have a very conservative federal government and a very conservative state government. 
Um, so, however, um, this might just be one of those areas of law reform which they think isn't going to be terribly unpopular and we might be able to um, achieve some change. Certainly in New South Wales, recognition of relationships has um, been on the agenda and it's a major lobbying issue for the gay and lesbian rights lobby in New South Wales. So. Um, we can learn from their campaigns and um, and we can also work with them so that when national media is happening, it's supporting all of our um, lobbying campaigns. So, yeah, I mean, it's certainly an issue that's that that's important in Australia and, and a number of lobbies are active in it. I mean, that national area is certainly something that we need to concern ourselves with because I'm sure a lot of our viewers aren't aware, but we cannot actually bring into gay marriage just in Victoria because that's actually a a national legislation rather than a Victorian legislation. So perhaps, Greg, you'd like to extend on that a little? You're, you're quite right. Uh, the Marriage Act is a federal act of legislation, not state, uh, not state government. Um, it's something that Home de Facto is looking into um, in regard to the rest of Australia and they are campaigning with the federal government. Uh, it's something that we believe from Home de Facto is, is desirable to some of our members, certainly not all of them. Um, we think that there needs to be more debate on that. Uh, yeah. yeah. I think it's important um, um, to say that no lobby in Australia is actually lobbying on the gay marriage issue. What we're really looking at is law reform to recognise same-sex relationships as a first step and then um, without ever ruling out the possibility of marriage because a lot of gay men and lesbians do want um, law reform that looks at marriage. So. Um, I think that's a, you know, it's, it's certainly something that we would never want to damage, but probably isn't achievable. I mean, there's some debate as to whether or not we actually need to change the constitution in order to um, bring about same-sex marriage, which would be um, very, very difficult to um, to, to succeed um, in if, you, if that was our main um, lobbying campaign. So we're, we're trying to, I mean, I think it's important for us to be realistic in our lobbying as well and um, in our law reform and, and, it's, and I think that, that um, Australia is ready for um, legal recognition of same-sex relationships and you know, this is a good first step. I do think that there is also other areas of legislation under the federal canopy that we need to look at prior to looking at marriage. I mean superannuation is one of those major areas of concern. Changing Victorian state legislation doesn't address superannuation which is governed by the Superannuation Industry Supervisory Act. It's a Commonwealth Act of legislation. So. Uh, this doesn't resolve a lot of the issues that Homo de facto has been fighting for on the Australia-wide level. There's, yeah, there's, uh, sorry, just following on from that, there's other areas in federal law too. Um, Workplace Relations Act discriminates against um, same-sex relationships in a whole variety of areas and and um, and when that act came in place, which was only last year, we weren't successful in removing all of those um, those areas of discrimination. So there's a lot of, lot of federal legislation which really needs a lot of work but this is really addressing state legislation. So evidently we're not actually talking about gay marriage per se, but we are going to be talking about some of the preferred models. So Michael, perhaps you'd like to discuss what some of those models are or the suggestions that have come out of the report. Well, the, the report has uh, basically looked at the various options and the submissions that were made following our discussion paper. And the uh, most likely option that eliminates discrimination, as we see, uh, is first of all a relationship register which would enable same-sex relationships to be registered, to have a partnership agreement which might deal with issues such as division of property, uh, terminating a relationship, a whole range of issues could be part of the agreement. And that would be for people who wish to have their relationship formally recognised. Uh, that could be registered at the Registry of Births, Deaths and Marriages, uh, which is a state instrumentality, and once you've achieved formal recognition then it would uh, be a recognised relationship for a whole range of purposes. But what about those couples who are not interested in actually registering in that formal sense but wanting to live in a de facto relationship? Currently our laws for de facto relationships don't cover same-sex couples and the differences between same-sex and married couples are quite different too and we need to point that out right now. But certainly those who choose to live in de facto relationships how would they be then seated if a register was taken up? Well, the, the, the second limb of the recommendation is to then change the definition of de facto in our legislation to include same-sex couples. And that would operate as a safety net mm -hmm. for couples who didn't wish to register, and there are a whole range of reasons why people may not wish to formally register the relationship, but at least as a safety net, there would be bottom line recognition of de facto relationships, and given the same rights and recognition as, as de facto in, the, in our laws at the moment. So it's a combination of the two that addresses most of the discrimination. 
Now, Greg, obviously you've read the report. Uh, I should imagine you've had quite a dealing with that report. After reading the report and looking at the suggested role for the register and for the changes to same sex, how do you feel about that, representing the de facto movement? We're quite happy with the outcome of the EOC recommendations. Uh, it fits in with the guidelines and the Homo de facto's mission statement and our aims and objectives. It's what we've, what we've been pushing for for two and a half years, uh, is to get the legal recognition for our relationships outside the institution of marriage. So we're quite happy and, and certainly welcome it. Uh, it hasn't addressed all the issues of concern in gay and lesbian relationships. Um, the EOC has stated that they need further discussion or recommend further discussion in the general community regarding IVF and adoption. Uh, if, those issue, if those areas are available to heterosexual de facto relationships, we feel that it's our, that it's our right, uh, if we want equality, to have access to those same uh, techniques of, of uh, conception and uh, child access. Uh, but we also agree that there does need to be more consultation in the community. But for this report, we welcome it. It's a step in the right direction, it's a starting point, and uh, I think that uh, the EOC has done a wonderful job with it. Would the, um, uh, any changes be tra uh, travelable within Australia? Would they only apply to Victoria? Well, because the legislation will be state-based, initially at least they would only be re recognised for the purposes of state legislation. But there are already pieces of Commonwealth legislation uh, which include recognition of same-sex de facto uh, relationships. Um, we think it's probably a matter of time before that recognition is transferable, but we suspect in the initial stages it will probably only be for Victorian laws. Okay, um, we have to wind up to a break at the moment. Um, just before we do, though, um, I'd actually like to uh, propose Vivian. Oh, Chris! Um, we figured this is the closest thing to a gay marriage we're going to get at the moment, uh, <laughs> since we're both gay. Do you want to stay in the country or something, Chris? <laughs> um, well, yeah, I'd like to. <laughs> <laughs> well, Chris, I'm going to have to take that one away and think about it over the break. Fine, thank, thank you. you. Hi, I'm the Vice President of Beg TV and the Executive Producer of Beg Beg. And here we have Carol, our Production Manager, who has only been a volunteer for how long, Carol? Oh, just about a couple of months, Lindsay. And you already have a title. Yes, I know, it was that quick. You were. Was it the accent or the fact that you're a hard worker? <laughs> no, no, I think it's just because I like the people at the event so much and when I became a volunteer, um, I wanted to learn about film and television, so um, this was the place to do it and I've been having a great time. A great time? Have you been doing any work though? Hardly any. Hardly any? I've been partying a lot though. I mean, they're great partiers here at the event. <laughs> Aren't they? Like this for yeah. example, we throw that away. <laughs> Are you done with that? No, not when you're a volunteer at Ben TV because... Well, because there's always people to meet and things to do, and you can get involved in the community as well, and the community does need your help. Exactly. So, if you want to be a volunteer for Bent TV, show up at 32 Lawrencedale at April at seven o'clock. Excuse me, on April 7th, and um, just come and meet some of the gang and get a. And welcome back to Bent Vent. In case you weren't with us beforehand. My lovely co-host here, Chris, has just proposed to me. We're discussing same-sex gay and lesbian relationships and marriage tonight. And at this stage, this is the closest we would get to a gay marriage, is a man and a woman marrying that were gay and lesbian. But unfortunately, while Chris still has some appendages that I don't really require, I'm afraid I'm going to have to decline. I'm sorry, Chris. Oh, well. But back on to our show. We've got a couple of questions from the audience now. Um, the first one I'd like to address to Janet, and it's what sort of opposition is this proposal up against? And it comes from Duncan. Well, um, basically it's up against the opposition that any of our law reform or recognition that gay men and lesbians even exist in society is up against. It's, it's up against a number of church groups who believe that, um, or the more right church groups, I guess, who believe that um, even the existence of gay men and lesbians um, threaten the family. And um, that being the nuclear family and the, you know, the God-given way to exist in the world. Um, I think that um, generally, though, I think we should be really heartened by the initial response. So I think that um, the that the media initially, um, certainly the Herald Sun ran a, a, an article around gay adoption, which had an outcry. So certainly, anything to do with gay and lesbian parenting um, is, uh, you know, obviously. Um, Attracting a lot of um, a lot of opposition. However, the media also felt, and I think that probably it reflects the view of the general community, that 
um, if we're only talking if we're talking about legal recognition of same-sex relationships in all other areas apart from um, parenting and children, then um, then it's not a story and it's not an issue. And um, I think that um, I think that the the opposition is much weaker in that in that area. Speaking yeah. of legal um, opposition, we also had a question from Troy. And I'd like to address this one to Michael. Michael, Troy wants to know if he was involved with somebody and was registered and then came across the sticky situation of divorce, where would that leave him in relationship to his partner? Well, under these proposals, if they're adopted, it, it wouldn't be the family court for a start. But uh, the relationship register would encompass the ability to have those sorts of issues dealt with in a partnership agreement. So termination of the relationship, or divorce if you like, could be dealt with in the agreement by providing for how that termination would take place and what division of assets would occur if, if the, the divorce occurred. It could all be addressed as part of the agreement. So it's an agreement a bit like a prenup for the old traditional marriage kind it, of look? In essence, a prenuptial agreement. And if it wasn't registered on the register, at least under the de facto provisions, there would at least be the ordinary provisions that are available at the moment to deal with division of property on an equitable basis. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a court process, but at least it allows for a fair division of property in the event of the end of a relationship. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, we've had quite a bit of response uh, in the media. What kind of response have we had and uh, who said what, basically? Um, I think Janet touched on it before. Some of the mainstream media made a big deal around access to IVF technologies and access to adoption for same-sex couples. But aside from those issues, there seems to have been quite a fair and accurate reporting of the discrimination which the report outlines. And I think that um, generally, the, um, I mean, obviously the media is looking for an angle or a story and, um, and the angle that they tried to, that, that they wanted to run was, um, was the issue of access to adoption and IVF. And that's actually um, quite misleading because that's not what the report's about. The report actually calls for more discussion about that, and um, and it also outlines what all the you know all the other areas of, dis uh, of discrimination that gay men and le lesbians experience in um, Victoria, and that in that in itself, in the reporting, and that I think was quite positive, and um, and it, I think it really shows the broader community that that and also the gay and lesbian community because I think a lot of gay men and lesbians don't realise that we're being that we are discriminated against because usually it doesn't happen until things go wrong, until of we course. break up or until someone's sick or someone's um, died um, and so we don't actually realise that our relationships aren't, aren't um, treated fairly before the law until things go wrong. It right. seems that the media didn't think issues like property law and superannuation were terribly glamorous and kind of just slipped through. Well unfortunately they're the things that seem to matter the most. Yeah. Mm. They are. I, was, I was a bit um, amazed, at, well not amazed really, I suppose it's to be expected but with the phone-in that uh, the Herald Sun, Herald Sun ran on the issue stating, do you agree with the recommendations of the Equal Opportunity Commission? And uh, based on the headlines, your ordinary person, your ordinary heterosexual suburban housewife type person who would have read those headlines and the brief outlines of the story would have phoned in that, no, they don't agree with the reform that the EOC has recommended. So, I mean, I, I personally, I'd seriously question the validity of the outcome of their phone line. To, to me, it's impossible for that to be an accurate uh, judge of the community feeling on this issue. In relation to the gay, the gay and lesbian media, I think um, we've had quite a good response and the fact that we're here um, tonight is really important because um, part of the role of the report um, also, as I said before, points out that discrimination happens and I think the gay and lesbian community is quite ignorant about that. And um, so the gay and lesbian media has responded quite well and we hope that they'll carry it through and, and um, and help us with the education process about um, about um, the discrimination that we all experience when we're in relationships. Now, there has been some suggestion that it was hoped that this um, proposal would slip under the noses of the straight media and be seen only by the gay media and so that this could be passed through Parliament without any hiccups that might occur from some rebuttal by the general public after reading these things in the straight media and how would you respond to that? Well, we had a fairly careful release of the report. I mean, we were clearly aware that it's an issue that some media would want to sensationalise. So it's certainly not that we were trying to avoid straight media or ensure that the report was not adequately covered because we, in fact, spent some considerable time briefing many media organisations about it. But what we were hoping was that it would get a fair treatment and a fair hearing and that the uh, reforms that 
recommended in the report would in fact be accurately reported. Unfortunately, uh, one paper in particular went the sensational route and that's what we were trying to avoid. But uh, no, we really want the report to be read in a calm way, fully considered, uh, with all of the issues raised to be understood. There are clearly a lot of misunderstandings out there that, that need to be addressed. There are clearly a lot of issues that are very important that, that need to be addressed. Uh, and we wanted to ensure that government had the opportunity to consider all those recommendations in a calm way without sensationalist reporting or uh, big issues being built up and beat up in a way that uh, would basically mean the report wouldn't be considered properly. Now, as you said, there's a lot of issues here that really need to be addressed. Speaking of which, do you think that this is overdue, considering that um, the EOC was set up in 1995 and on the 1st of January 1996 the Equal Opportunity Act was um, amended to include lawful sexual activity. So has this really been going on for a couple of years, this fight for equality and relationships? Yes, it has. When, when the new Act was started, we established a reference group with various gay and lesbian community groups and, and individuals. Uh, and it was one of the issues that was identified fairly early on as needing to be addressed because we saw that in, for many same-sex couples, there were some issues that could be addressed by the existing legislation, but we kept seeing gaps. And so what the report is about is taking the objectives of the Equal Opportunity Act, eliminating discrimination, and looking at the discrimination that still occurs and ways of addressing it. So yes, it's, it's, a, it's a report that was well overdue. It's consistent with the principles in the Equal Opportunity Act. Uh, we've examined the various areas for reform, and now it's over to government. I'd also like to add that once the issues were identified by the reference group, there was actually a consultation process which we went through in order to write the report so that a discussion paper was released and submissions were invited from the public and it was on the basis of those submissions as well as further research into the issues that the report was actually put together. Mm -hmm. um, the ACT currently has the uh, Domestic Relationship Act 94 uh, which gives um, the same rights as hetero de facto's. Um, now de facto's don't quite have the same rights as married couples, is that going to be the case do you think for um, same-sex relationships as well? Certainly the de facto legislation, I mean heterosexual people in de facto relationships that don't, don't enjoy the same rights as people who get married um, and and so the, the legislation around de facto relationships needs amendment too and, um, um, and, the, and that's probably part of the reason why we say that you know eventually and, and certainly a lot of the gay and lesbian community do want to um, to go down the marriage path. However, the first step, the very barest minimum, is that we should be enjoying the same rights as heterosexuals yeah. um, in their relationships. So the very the, bar the barest minimum, the first step is um, legal recognition through broadening the definition of de facto. I think of the ACT Domestic Relationships Act mainly deals with termination of a relationship too, and gives very little protection to anybody in a same-sex relationship. Uh, it deals mainly with the uh, termination of a relationship. Mm -hmm. The um, how, uh, this may be an impossible question to answer, but just how many um, acts and uh, laws will have to be changed in order to bring this about? Do, 20, is, there, is it 27? I think it is, that there's about 27 yeah. state acts. And 14 Commonwealth acts, yeah. I think you yeah. identified. Yeah. Yeah. So lots. According to the proposal, there's a lot of contradictions between the different acts at the moment, um, and any contradiction is lawful. If one of the acts that is amended is still contradicted by another act, is it likely to go in a positive or a negative way for the, the current proposal? Well, ordinarily the newest legislation would, would prevail, uh, but what this report says is there needs to be a general reform uh, to deal with these issues, that, that a piecemeal approach wouldn't eliminate all of the discrimination that we've identified. Uh, we've identified a large number of pieces of legislation, probably legislation people didn't even realise included discriminatory provisions. But we've identified all that we're aware of now, uh, and they're on the table. And so uh, if government really wished to address discrimination on this basis, then they would need a fairly wholesale approach to all of those provisions. Well, we've established that this is overdue, and it is on the table, and it has been going on for a couple of years now. How much longer is this likely to go on before we see some change? It's over to the, it's over to the politicians now. Okay. Um, and so, I mean, the next step really is for the um, gay and lesbian community to, um, to hassle the politicians and um, let them know that this is a really important issue for us and, um, and that it's not fair to discriminate against us just because of our sexuality. So, um, 
it's over to um, Jan Wade, at least initially, and the, and the um, Kennett government to recommend and draft the legislation, because this is really just, it's a report which identifies the issues and the next step is drafting the legislation and we need to be party to those, or we need to be lobbying to make sure that that happens, but we also need to be involved in the negotiations to make sure that we get the legislation we want to see. Um, and then um, it's up to the will of government to, um, to actually pass those acts. Well, that could be anybody's guess. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm afraid that's all we have time for tonight. So thanks this evening to our guests and to our many sponsors. And if you'd like to put a question to anybody in the hot seat next week, you can come to Three Faces uh, Thursday at 7pm and join in the taping. If you want any details, uh, please give us a ring 9663 5902 for details. And next week we'll be looking at the contentious issue of gay image. Thanks Vivian. And thank you Chris. And remember, until we see you next time, stay bent and good night. Good night.